On glaciated terrain, we may choose to use one or several carabiners for tying into the rope. When choosing a carabiner configuration, there are a few considerations of which we should be aware. Hi there, I'm Jason. When we tie into the rope for a glacier travel, we aren't always going to tie in directly to the rope like we do in pitched out climbing. Sometimes we are going to connect ourselves with a single or a set of carabiners. In the future, we'll do another more comprehensive video about all the reasoning behind whether to use direct tie-in knots or carabiners. This can have a lot to do with our position on the rope team, such as if we're connected at the middle of the rope, our preferred crevasse rescue system, which may dictate if we want a free end of the rope available, and the terrain we might be facing after exiting the glacier. But for now, we are going to assume that we've chosen to connect ourselves to the rope with a carabiner. We can get away with this in many glacier travel circumstances due to the lower fall forces we experience on moderate terrain. It used to be the case that a bite knot was attached to a single locking carabiner, even a screw gate carabiner, but that has fallen out of best practice. Even with the screw tightening downwards, the jostling a single screw gate locker can take as we walk for tens of thousands of steps, along with the potential of a thigh rubbing across the screw gate can result in the screw coming loose. We can solve this in a number of different ways. We could simply make it a double or triple action locker. This dramatically reduces the likelihood of the locker working itself unlocked because it takes constant force in multiple directions to unlock. We could also add in an opposite and opposed carabiner as either a locker or non-locker, and you can watch a short we did about opposite and opposed. There's a link in the description. But we need the carabiners to be roughly the same size. If the carabiners are not roughly the same size, we end up with one carabiner really taking the load and nesting poorly. That can make it easier for the larger carabiner to get in the way and can twist the carabiner set in weird directions. But even without poorly nested carabiners, we can have issues with cross-loading where the weight of a fall is distributed across the minor axis of the carabiner. Carabiners are only about a third as strong across the minor axis. So we can incorporate a carabiner or two with capture gates. Capture gates keep our carabiner oriented so that any fall force will be applied to the major axis. Having solved for the single screw gate issue and the cross-loading issue, we do have a third issue to consider, and that is freezing. We did an entire video, there is another link in the description, on different carabiner gate closures and their response to being pressed into snow. Most locking carabiners did not perform particularly well. Compacted snow or ice crystals can freeze most locking designs, and whether frozen open or shut either presents a problem. That's where double-gated carabiners come into play. Think of this like having two opposite and opposed non-lockers, but incorporated into the tidiness of a single carabiner. While two opposite and opposed non-lockers with keeper gates would be an option, I've been using the Gravel Clipsidra S for a number of years now. It solves for all three issues we've discussed. It cannot come undone through a single intermittent or even persistent force as there is no screw to loosen and the gates move in opposite directions. It cannot cross-load due to the keeper gate. And the locking mechanism is much more resistant to freezing than other locking designs. It does have a learning curve for using it efficiently with gloves, but by getting used to using my thumb to drive the two gates apart as the first move, I've become quite proficient at using it. I would say that this is one downside when compared to other options, however. There are lots of choices you could make that would meet current best practices for a carabiner connection at the tie-in point, but hopefully this video has informed what solution might be best for you. Have a trip planned where you will be on a glacier? Tell us where you're going in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can check out a video that I referenced about carabiners freezing, or you can check out our entire series on cold weather considerations. We'll see you next week, and keep on getting more out of that big outside.